Hello in lecture number one of my course about NIDOR variation in Sicilian. We are going to see some free, I would say, classical games, some illustrative games, in which you can see uh, how Black can develop their initiative. Uh, so the first game will be between Peter Spiller and Judith Folgar. It was played in 1999. Of course, Judith Folgar is a, a woman's chess le le legend. She is the best woman uh, in the history of chess. And Peter Swidler uh, is a strong grandmaster uh, who is constantly in the top 10 on, on the world FIDE list. So let's see how the game was played. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6. This is, of course, the starting position of the Nidor variation in Sicilian. Peter Swidler played bishop e2. This is uh, a solid approach. This is the pet move of Anatoly Karpov uh, in his match against Kas uh, Kasparov, uh, played in Moscow. Uh, the aim of this move is just to uh, finish the development uh, and just to castle uh, kingside and try to get some uh, positional grip. E5. Of course, other alternative, uh, which is uh, also popular, is the move e6. But Judith Polgar decided to uh, play a little bit more direct with e5. Knight b3, bishop e7, castling. Of course, other approach is the solid bishop e3, bishop e6, and immediately jumping on d5. Of course, black cannot touch on e4. Because after knight, knight b6 or even bishop b6, uh, he will be just losing. So knight bd7. Uh, Black is not afraid of losing his dark sword bishop because the d6 pawn, uh, after playing, for example, rook d8, will not be an issue. So after queen d3 uh, castling, right now it's possible to take with a bishop, but of course castling, and after c4. Some nice uh, approach with b5, cb5, ab5. Black is uh, gaining the advantage of his better development. Taking on b5 is of course too risky. Uh, at that point, Black could just take on e4 uh, with some with some uh, nice initiative. So after castling, the position would be about equal because Black. Uh, has fair compensation thanks to his active pieces and to and thanks to the uh, weak pawns on the on the queen side. So this was one of the possibility. So in the game, Peter Spiller decided to play other popular move, which is castling. Castling, bishop e3, and bishop e6. Both sides have just completed their development. Knight d5, and again with similar idea, knight bd7. Black is not afraid of losing his dark sword, dark sword bishop. Queen d3, bishop d5, right moment to exchange on d5. Ed5, and a very good strategic idea, knight c5. In the game it was queen d2. Let's have a look what could happen after knight c5. Then after dc5, rook fd1, e4, very nice active move. Uh, dark squared bishop is coming back to life. He will gain some active squares. Queen d2, bishop d6, a4, queen c7, attacking the h2 pawn, b3, rook a e8, and after a5, knight d7, black is perfectly fine. He has some now nice outposts. Uh, white squares in, in the white white scamp uh, are very weak, so the position is, is fine for black. So Peter Spiedler uh, decided not to take on c5 and just retreat with his queen on d2. Knight f e4. 
Of course, Judith Polgar loves uh, to play uh, active, and when he has the chance, he's doing it. Queen b4, and again, very nice move, a5. Uh, the typical pawn structure in Nidorf on uh, queen side is often uh, to play a6 and b5. But of course, when uh, there's a chance, you have to know that you can play with your a pawn. Queen b5. This is slight inaccuracy. It was better to play queen c4 and after rook c8. Just to simplify a little bit and right now queen b5. On f5, c3, the position is about equal. Let's see how the game was played. Queen c7, rook f1, b6. Black is very solid on the queen side. Uh, white cannot uh, harm uh, black uh, here at all. Queen c4. White finally had to retreat with his queen because on b5 uh, it wasn't a good square for, for the queen. f5. Bishop d3. And queen d8. Some good maneuvering. Yeah. Knight c5. And knight c5. Of course, there, there, it was also possible to take. Uh, it, it wasn't possi possible to take with, uh, with a pawn because on e4 it would be, the knight would be hanging. A3, rook c8, queen b5. As you can notice, black has made many moves uh, with his queen, uh, but uh, at, at that point uh, he, he must do it because. Uh, he would be attacked by the rook from c8. It was also possible to play b4, and after taking on d3, queen d3, f4, bishop d2, f3, black is again gaining some, uh, some nice initiative on the king side. So Spiedler played queen b5, e4, bishop f1, Bishop f6. Right now the dark squared bishop uh, is active, so the position is perfectly fine for black, and he is right now uh, a little bit better. Rook a to b1. This is not a good move, but uh, what what else uh, white can play? Bishop e5. b4. Finally, uh, white uh, broke a little bit black's the de defense on the, on the queen side. But it's uh, too late, of course. Black uh, already has started some good action on the on the king side. A before, rook before. Again, it's not the best move. It was better just to kick uh, uh, the dark knight, uh, dark knight uh, from from the c5. But uh, anyway, it was already a difficult position for white. But it was a better chance. Uh, to, to hold. Knight d7. Rook c4. White wants uh, to simplify a little bit the position. Of course, uh, the rook on c8 uh, wasn't uh, wasn't um, didn't attack uh, the white's king, so it's okay to to exchange it. Queen c4. Queen e8. Right now. Uh, Black was threatening with Queen h5 and winning the game. The so Rook e1 uh, is a logical move. Knight f6. Probably this is not the best way to continue the attack, but still, uh, Black is much better. h3, Knight d7. Uh, Judith Polgar uh, noticed that uh, her last move wasn't the best, uh, so he just going he's just going back with his knight. The loss of uh, two tempo uh, is not dangerous here because black is still better. Queen c7, f4. Very active, very nice move. Bishop c1. Of course, it was uh, white just need to take uh, the pawn on b6. Let's have a look what could happen. Here, after taking on b6, queen b6, bishop c3. Rook b1, queen e5. It's still black who has some very strong attack on the on the king side, 
but at least uh, white has a pawn for, for, for that attack. In the game after bishop c1 is very passive and the game will end very quickly. So after bishop c1 e3, very uh, good attacking move. Bishop b5, this is the last, uh, the last mistake in the game. And after ef2, king f2, f3, very good move. After which Peter, Peter Swidler uh, resigned. Let's have a look what could happen. f3, after queen d7, of course, there's bishop g3, king g3, queen e1, and the game uh, is just completely lost. So this was a very nice uh, attacking game by uh, Judith Polgar. Uh, as, as you can see, there was uh, plenty of possibilities to attack. So this is why uh, I said in my introduction that this is the best opening uh, to play when you want to win with your black pieces. And in, in the game, uh, black just showed all, all of his attacking possibilities. Let's see another game. Uh, again, with white, it's Peter Schwiedler. Uh, so it's uh, the second game where he is losing with white pieces against Nidorf. And with black, it's Veselin Topalov. Of course, uh, he's, he's a very strong grandmaster. One of the best uh, Bulgarian, or maybe the best Bulgarian in the, in, uh, in the history of his country. Uh, so let's have a look. The game was played in 2005 in FIDE World Championship in St. Louis. e4, c5, knight f3, d6. And this is again the starting position of knight of. Bishop e3. This time uh, white aims to play the English attack. Mm, and black decided to play the move knight g4. This is one of the possibilities. Of course, after bishop c1, knight f6, there will be a repetition and the possible draw. But of course, white doesn't want a draw, and he played bishop g5. h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, bishop g7. This is one of the, uh, of the lines which can be played by black and, and by white, of course. Fully playable. Uh, the pawns on the, on the king's side uh, are, are perfectly fine. And uh, black has... Uh, has developed quite quickly his, his bishop. So let's see how the game will continue. h3, knight e5, knight f5. Of course, the bishop on g7 is hanging, so black must take on f5, e f5, knight b6. If uh, black wants to play queen a5, this is the pseudo uh, active move, then after uh, uh, he is countered by queen d5 and knight b6, queen a5, knight a5, knight d5. This is white who is in driver's seat. So this is not a good idea to start with queen a5. So knight b6 is a better way. Knight d5, e6. Black wants to do something immediately with active knight on d5. So he is attacking it uh, with e6. More popular way uh, is to play f e6. After f e6, knight e3. Right now it's uh, good to play queen a5. Let's have a look at some short variation. Knight f3, queen f3, bishop c3, king d1, bishop b2, rook c1. It's better to play queen e4, and after Bishop a1, knight e7, bishop d6, queen a4, knight c2, queen d7, taking, taking. The position is uh, probably balanced. Uh, of course, white has uh, two pieces uh, for the rook, so it's uh, in most cases it's, it's an advantage. But black is very active, he can start immediately an action with his rooks. So the position and the resulting endgame will be about balanced. So this was one of the possibilities. As you can see, uh, even in the opening, there can arise some sharp variations. Uh, 
it's typical for Nidorf. In the game, Peter Swiddler played knight e3. Again, queen a5. And in the game resulted quite similar variation after knight f3. Queen f3. Of course, taking with a pawn uh, wasn't good because after bishop c3, bc3, queen c3 and king e2, white would lose after knight d4. Bishop c3. King d1. Of course, taking queen c3 wasn't good because uh, rook on a1 uh, would be lost. Queen a4. Knight c2. It was quite interesting to play king c1. After bishop b2, king b2, queen b4, king c1, knight d4, queen d1, queen c3, king d1. There will be there will be there would be quite interesting perpetual and quite an interesting draw. So this was one of the possibilities. But Peter Swiddler decided not to take a draw and play for a win. With knight c2. Of course, uh, black is forced to take another pawn on b2. fe6. Right now it's not good to take on a1 because black would be mated. So fe6. Queen b3. White is forcing the endgame, uh, which result will be very balanced as, we, balanced, as we can see, as we will see. a b3. Bishop a1. Knight a1. And king e7. So what, we ass what is the assessment of this endgame? Uh, this is not uh, the sharp endgame, the sharp position. Uh, the result of the, of, the, of the opening is that it's a typical uh, strategic endgame. Black has uh, rook and two pawns for, uh, for two minor pieces. And probably uh, if there will, would be a queens on the, on the, on the board, it would be white, who would be better. But in that particular case, without queens, uh, it is black who has uh, better chances in this endgame. So let's see how the game was played. Bishop d3, rook a c8, rook e1. Of course, this is not the best way to start, but uh, anyway, it would be uh, black who would be better in that position. Knight d4. Good move, just centralizing uh, the knight. f3. Rook c3. Little bit premature, but still it's not, uh, it's not a big mistake. King d2. Rook h8. And rook b1. Right now it was better just to play bishop c4. And after sacrificing on c4. And bishop f2. The position would be about equal. Of course, uh, black has three uh, pawns for four of a piece, and it can uh, look dangerous because his knight on a1 is very passive. But uh, it's easy to go back with the play uh, from a1. So this was uh, definitely a better practical chance uh, for white. Instead, he decided to play rook b1, a passive move, uh, probably right now. It's a deciding mistake. And of course, black is just going back with his rook to c5. d4, rook d5. Very nice uh, lift of the rook. Bishop f2, and king d7. Uh, black is giving up uh, his, his uh, active knight uh, on d4, but it's not, uh, not an issue. White even didn't want to take it. Bishop e3, knight f5, going back, and knight h4. Of course, uh, Topalov assessed this position uh, well, but he is better, so he doesn't want to make a perpetual with, uh, make a draw uh, with a repetition after playing knight f4. Taking on h4, g h4, knight c2, h5. Good restricting move. Uh, the knight uh, will know uh, will have uh, will will just not have uh, square on g4. Rook e1. 
rook g8, knight uh, king c3. Uh, it was better probably to, to play uh, rook e2 and just to try to make some kind of fortress after rook e2 and knight e1. Luck is not wasting time on taking uh, the pawn on g2. Of course, it was even not possible because uh, of the fork on e3. And he is playing the fine move a5. Finally, black pawns uh, are starting their march. Bishop c4. This is uh, not a good move. It was better to take that pawn with a5. And after rook c5, king b4. Take uh, on g2. Right now it's possible because uh, rook is no longer st standing on d5. And after knight d4, still white would have some good chances to hold that position. Instead, he decided to play bishop c4. And after rook c8, knight e3, rook b5. Powerful move. Probably uh, Spiller just missed that move. It's a very good uh, tactical move because right now black is threatening with d5, blocking d3, and finally uh, black can take on b4. Bishop e6, probably the only chance, but anyway, the position is lost. King e6, knight c2, king d5, and after taking on b4, rook e7, b5, rook h7, the pawns. Would march too fast. So finally, uh, Peter Swidler resigned. Uh, this was maybe not the typical game in Nidorf because uh, when I'm saying the typical game in Nidorf, I mean uh, that there are many sacrifices and very sharp play. But uh, anyway, the opening was quite interesting, and the result of that was an end game where Topalov just outplayed his very strong opponent. So the third game would be will be uh, against Hikaru Nakamura and Boris Gerbrand. Uh, it was played in 2005. Let's have a look at it. E4, C5. Of course, the Nidor operation, and Bishop G5. This is the most aggressive approach from White. E6, F4. And here, after queen b6, would be uh, the famous variation of poisoned pawn, uh, which we will uh, analyze it in our course. Uh, but in that game, it was played knight bd7, which is, of course, a fully playable move. Queen f3, queen c7, just link, and b5. Black is immediately starting his play on the queen side. He is not afraid of the move e5 because he can counter it with bishop e7. So bishop d3. Bishop b7. Black is uh, just exerting some pressure against the e4 pawn. Rook h e1. Queen b6. And here there is a very sharp variation uh, which Nakamura decided to play. And this is the move knight d5. Very strong uh, move. Of course, after e d5, e d5, there will be a strong uh, pressure and strong attack for white. So it's better just to play uh, queen d4. Let's have a look. After e d5, uh, even white can play knight c6. Maybe not immediately e d5, but of course, e d5 was also possible. But after knight c6, uh, bishop c6, e d5. Black, uh, white uh, regains one of the uh, pieces. And after bishop f6 and bishop f5, the position is terribly bad for, for black. He's terribly uh, passive and terribly... Uh, he has very uh, uh, weak uh, pawns. So it's of course not good. And he is even losing. This is quite a nice variation. Let's have a quick look at it. d5 and rook e7. Queen f6, and the game can just end. So you can be, uh, so you can, uh, you have to be careful with uh, knight of variation, just not to let uh, your opponent to make some that type of sacrifices. 
So you have to also always uh, be careful with that. Remember. So this is why I mentioned in the introduction, but uh, at some lines you just have to uh, memorize uh, memorize all the lines. But when you know your stuff, how to react, it's not dangerous. Queen d4, bishop f6, bf6, bishop b5. Of course, this is all uh, the theory. Queen c5, knight f6. It was also possible to play b4, queen b5. And that uh, endgame, uh, that maybe not even an endgame, but that position is very balanced. Of course, three pieces uh, can be better uh, against the queen. Or queen h5, rook a2. The position is balanced. In the game, Nakamura took on f6. King d8. This is the best move. And here, it was uh, possible to play with bishop d7, but after... Uh, bishop e7, uh, too many pieces are hanging. After queen b3, taking on f6, rook a7. Uh, black has three pawns for, for the piece, but his bishop uh, is stronger uh, than, than the three pawns uh, of, of white. So this was one of the possibility. In the game, Nakamura reacted with knight d7. Of course, queen b5. And there is quite similar uh, position, but uh, the, non, the absence of, of the queen uh, would favor black. In, in that particular situation, there are queens, so it's uh, the better uh, than, than the previous line for white. Queen a3, rook c8, queen d6, king, king e8. Of course, there is no mate because e7 is uh, defended by the queen. c3. Right now, the best way would be the, to play rook e3. After queen c6, rook g8 would lo lose uh, on the spot after uh, that uh, move. Uh, probably, probably just uh, it, it is just simple. Too many pieces are hanging uh, and the position is just collapsing. All of the position would be tangled. So, let's have a look after the best defense, which, which would be queen c6. After queen d2, uh, king e7, queen, queen b4, king f6, c3. Still, black has some problems. Probably there was a better defense. Uh, instead, playing, instead of playing king e7. In that line, uh, still white has some good uh, chances to win that position. But still the variations are quite interesting uh, and there are plenty of sharp play. Let's move back. Nakamura played uh, to, to calm move which is c3. Queen c6, again with uh, defensive resource. Queen b4, and a very good move, just disturbing whites uh, uh, with, with a5. Queen a5, rook a8. It is uh, very important to get some uh, active play, uh, and this is how black achieved it with the move a5. Queen g5, and f6. Of course, black has to untangle a little bit. Queen d5. Definitely, this is not the best way to react because uh, the exchanging of queens uh, can only favor black. So it was better to play, for example, queen h5 after rook f7, a3, rook a3. It was just uh, a nice uh, sacrifice, but let's have a look uh, at some different uh, way of reacting with queen g7. Then after rook a2, rook d4, queen b5, b3, rook a1, there would be just a perfect wall. Of course, black cannot take on b3 because he would be checkmated on d7, so the perfect wall would be the natural result. So this was the way how Nakamura should react. 
After queen d5, of course, black is not obliged to take immediately on d5, but he played the best way, which is queen c3. Bc3, e d5, e d5, king d7. Uh, despite that, that uh, white has four pawns for, for the bishop, uh, all of the pawns are just weak, so the resulted endgame is again better for black. King b1, because on a2 it was hanging, and rook a4. Black is immediately starting some action against the white's weak pawn. g3, rook f a8, rook d2, rook a to a5. Again, putting some pressure against the d5 pawn. d6. It was better to gain some active play with uh, rook e6, and after rook d5, Rook e2, rook d6, rook e7, king c8. Still, it is black who is, who is better in that position because on h7 uh, white cannot take because of the check on e4. But it was uh, the best way uh, to start just to get some active play. After the move e6, bishop e4, bishop is just totally dominating white's position. King a1, h5. Very good uh, move, just restricting uh, the white's pawn, pawns. h3, and bishop d5, just going for the pawns. g4, taking on a2, taking on a2, king b1, and going for the pawn on h3. Rook e3, white doesn't want to give up the h3 pawn, but after h4, the h3 pawn would be very loose. King c1, king d6, f5, rook f2 with the threat of rook f3. But after king d1, black is anyway playing that move and white just resigned because his position is hopeless. So it was again a very interesting game. Uh, again, uh, after a very sharp uh, opening. Uh, the result of that was uh, the, the technical uh, endgame, in which uh, black was simply better and just outplayed his opponent. So this was the lecture number one. Uh, in next lecture lectures we will see uh, some theory uh, for black. That was uh, just some illustrative uh, games from black. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.